people. I'm talking about liquid. Rich enough to have your own jet. Rich enough not to waste time. Well, in my book, you either do it right or you get eliminated. Their analysts, they don't know preferred stock from livestock, all right? The new law of evolution in corporate America seems to be survival of the unfit. Good evening, stock traders, and welcome to Stock Traders Talk Radio. Here on a beautiful Sunday night, April the 1st, 2012, I am your host, STT. Joining me on tonight's program, I have Stock Sumo. Hey, good evening. How are you tonight, sir? Oh, I'm doing great. I really got a kick out of that first interview, but I'm really excited about this Andy's Gold interview. Yep, should be entertaining for sure. Also, joining us on the program tonight is Mr. Cop. Hey, gentlemen, how are you? I am fantastic, sir. How about yourself? Loving it. Absolutely having a blast. Okay. Also joining us on the radio program tonight is Sifakia. Aloha. Can't wait to get this going. Good stuff. Sounds good. Doing tonight's CEO interview is Mr. Cop. Mr. Cop, take it away, sir. Thanks, SDT. We're here with Mr. Robert Talbot, the chairman and CEO of Andy's Gold Corp, stock ticker AGCW. The uh, one thing I want to tell the audience and uh, uh, kind of be very uh, uh, open about this, uh, Stock Traders Talk Radio basically contacted uh, Andy's Gold Corp. And the reason why we did is – uh, we've interviewed, I'd say, what, probably over maybe 300 companies over the course of the years, uh, a lot of companies, and many mining companies. However, this one intrigued us uh, to such a point that we did everything we could to get this interview. And the reason why is uh, we haven't seen any comp- any gold mining companies uh, be in the production aspect, vice exploration. So we thought it was like, okay, this, you know, this this is very unusual in the fact of uh, – being in production, and especially being in the OTC market. So hence, that's what we did. So I just wanted to kind of get put that out there. Uh, welcome to Stock Traders Talk Radio, Mr. Talbot. Thanks very much. Uh, just a quick comment. Uh, the symbol is A-G-C-Z. You said C-W. Ah, yes, A-G-C-Z. Gotcha. <laughs> the, um, I was just basically announcing to the audience uh, that, you know, uh, the difference between uh, – uh, the production aspect vice the exploration aspect. And, you know, that's a very intriguing thing, especially in the OTC market. Um, and I kind of wanted to touch, touch there and, and basically uh, have you give, uh, uh, you know, to the audience what the company actually does. Well, the, the, what, what we do is we have gone out and, and done exploration. We've uh, found our, our concessions. We've developed the, uh, the gold on the concession to the point that it's uh, ready to go into production. Uh, we acquired uh, mills to uh, to be able to go into production, and so that we we established a cash flow right away. Most companies that, that call themselves gold companies are are uh, years away from going into production. They may have outcrops with gold. They may have drill holes with gold, but to get to the point where you've developed your reserves to the point where you can go on production, actually produce gold, produce gold uh, tablets, gold bars, uh, is another four or five years away. We're at the point where we've found the gold, we've developed the projects, now we're producing the gold and generating a significant cash flow. Yeah, that's uh in the OTC. That's pretty uh, uh pretty rare to say the least. That's I mean that's the main reason why we we sought you out. I mean, the, what would you when you describe the differences between the production and exploration? Uh, you know, most of them never even get to production, and you're there. That's that's correct, uh, and uh, that that sets us miles ahead of of all the OTC companies. Is that when you have, have uh, the kind of uh, cash flow that we have from the production, that uh, we can pretty well 
uh, do what we want when it comes to buying additional reserves or developing additional reserves. We don't have to uh, do press releases uh, to raise money when when the the grades that are being being found are so low that that really the cost of, of gold has to be well over two thousand dollars to bring it on production. We've established uh, in our uh, uh, our mills that uh, we produce a, a minimum of one ounce of gold per per uh, ton. And uh, we're currently at 50 ounces of gold uh, a day. By the end of April, we'll be at 100 ounces of gold a day. And by the end of September, over 200 ounces of gold a day. <laughs> you're, you're 50 ounces per day now, and at the end of April, you'll be at 100 ounces a day? That's correct. I just want to clarify that. Wow. Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, impressive. The, how about if for, for our audience uh, to, un- to understand your, your background experience, and can you, could you go into that a little bit as well as a brief history of the company? Sure. I, I, uh, I took geology in, at the University of Alberta in Canada and then uh, worked for Rio Tinto uh, Exploration. I uh, was trained by them in the field. I, I uh, uh, ran projects for them. I ran drilling projects for them. I did uh, property examination where they sent me up to – evaluate properties to see if they wanted to move ahead. And then from there I worked for the coal division of Hudson's Bay Oil and Gas and uh, uh, learned to uh, be involved in the engineering and the development, taking uh, projects from raw exploration right to development and handing over to the engineers. Now what is the makeup? Okay, go ahead. The, the company itself is is what we we did is is we went and, and looked at uh, 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 concessions that had done some preliminary exploration. Uh, we did the next stage of exploration. Uh, at the same time, we went and looking for mills, and uh, uh, we found uh, mills that might have uh, smaller capabilities in the form of two to five tons per day. And we uh, acquired the mills, upgraded them, modernized them, and brought their capability up to 150 tons a day. Amazing. Now, what is the makeup of your board of directors or, or your team, per se, and you know the reasoning that you selected that team? The, the, the main team and the board of directors is made up of myself and uh, an individual called uh, – uh, Henry Andrews. Henry has uh, been involved in in a variety of businesses uh, over the years. Um, then we have a CEO, uh, Dennis Rogeri. He's a very talented uh, accountant. And then in uh, South America, where our major operations are, we have two senior people down there that are very experienced in in mining and uh, uh, milling of, of gold and copper and silver. And then each uh, project has its own uh, mining superintendent that uh, uh, carries out the the instructions that uh, I give and uh, uh, my senior guys give to bring uh, uh, the mills on production or or to uh, bring in different areas that we want to start to produce based on the testing that's been done. No. Tell us about your strategic direction or your business objectives. And 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 frankly, if you could, if you could focus in on you know going from 50 ounces of gold to 100 ounces of gold, I mean that that's a pretty big that's pretty significant, especially when the you know the challenges of getting a gold mine in production uh, is is huge. Can you go into those pieces and how how you plan to do that? Sure. We what what we have done is is uh, over the last two years we have uh, picked up other properties. Uh, We've developed the properties. We've taken them from probable reserves uh, to uh, proven reserves, uh, then proven developed reserves by doing uh, the exploration and the development work and the testing that's necessary to make sure that they're economical. And uh, we believe that uh, within a year uh, we will have several more mills uh, underneath our uh, our uh, company, as well as uh, at least uh, another two mines. At the same time, because we have the mill, we're able to do what what a lot of the large companies do is 
uh, other other small mines that are ready to go into production but have no milling capabilities. We go to these these people and we either buy their reserves or do a contract with them to mill their gold. So we pick up uh, cash flow by uh, milling their gold for for them. Uh, it helps them in the fact that they get a cash flow right away. Uh, they get a stable cash flow because we mill their gold for them. And at the same time, it significantly increases our cash flow. Excellent. It, now, where did your the, this concept originate from for, for you to go into the mining and especially specifically, you know, when you go to the production piece and become in a mill, I mean, you're getting ready to go to the next tier, right? Yes, we are. It, it is is we have we have enough uh, uh, additional reserve right now. We have uh, 300 ounces of proven developed reserves. Uh, we have probable reserves which we don't really talk about or or report of, of over a million ounces, and those will be turned into probable reserves. The key part on this whole thing is keeping your mill in production at all times. Uh, our capability on the, our existing mill is 150 tons a, a day. When you consider we have a, uh, a head grade of one ounce per ton, that, that's as much as uh, 150 ounces uh, of gold per day. Uh, at the same time, we, we've uh, added uh, uh, additional aspects to the mill to, to bring our, our yield on the mill up to uh, 92% which is very high in the industry. A standard mill has a yield of uh, 69 to 72%. And we, we spend a lot of time making sure that we can maximize the yield. And that that increases your cash flow substantially. That's a, that's very interesting, especially from the operation standpoint. I, I you know, I, I've been doing interviews for a very long time and, and, you know, I've a lot of mining companies, and like I said earlier, that you know they're all exploration in most cases to where you know they found this area and they're going to start mining and go into the exploration phases. And what you end up seeing is you see a bunch of press releases. And however, you're focused on the other end of that, meaning because you're already at the production stage, I mean, you could probably do press releases for ten months every single day based off the expiration if you're already at the production. I mean, am I, am I exaggerating there at all, or? No, that, that's true. I mean, we could. As, as, as we increase our production on a weekly basis, we can uh, announce the increase in production. We can uh, announce that we've taken uh, uh, a large amount of our probable reserves and changed them to proven developed reserves. And we've found that, that what's best is to, to not do a press release until you're ready to, to put out announcements that, that have some impact on the company. Our imp our uh, impact uh, what we'd like to see on the company is is a serious growth in cash flow and uh, serious growth in our proven developed reserves and uh, until we can can back that up with test data with uh, 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 any uh, other data that are required to bring the mine on production we see no reason to to make a bunch of press releases but yes we we have a uh, many many projects that are very close to coming on production. Yeah, it's 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 awesome when you have you know when you have a strong exploration program that is already proven, and you and you know how to found, find gold and that you know that's easy to put in production at this stage, and not just tout uh, probable reserves that are cost prohibitive to you know the mine itself. That's uh, impressive. Let's uh you know a, a lot of our listeners uh you know may understand gold in that sector to to a certain degree and many may not so what I'd like to kind of do is you know can you elaborate on the significance of the market itself or in your industry uh, and and you know the specific or targeted you know audience or application for your your products itself well what the key part on this whole and the whole operation is are the mills and the ability to process your your ore if you can't process your uh you can't do uh, you can't do much with it even if you're at a point where you're ready to process your ore and if there's no milling capabilities uh then uh, uh that's very difficult for the company they've spent uh, millions of dollars and can't go into production because they have no no milling capabilities and uh, most of the mills are at capacity right now 
So what you're, we we look for is uh, uh, people that that understand that the growth of the company will be through through its cash flow. Uh, that's the market we're really targeting is people that understand that there's going to be cash flow with cash flow and with gold production. We believe ultimately we'll be like a lot of the majors, uh, able to issue a dividend uh, based on the price of gold and based on the on the production. As our production increases, uh, our profits increase, and, and we can uh, put out a dividend related to that. Excellent. Now, now normally I, I would ask a question regarding your business plan, and uh, you know I'd ask you you know to go in your phase or your your development or your stage, if you will. Uh, but you're constantly different pieces of your company are in different stages, meaning you have the expiration side, you have the milling side. Uh, you know, it, how, how would you describe to the audience what your current operations are? Our, our current operations are we're, uh, we're a producing company with uh, expectations of, of doubling or tripling our production and uh, at the same time increasing the uh, uh, the reserves through uh, acquisition and expiration. Now, what are your expectations in short term? Uh, in the sh- in the short term, uh, uh, as I mentioned previously, we'll we'll get up over uh, uh, 100 ounces of gold a, a day as of the end of April. Uh, as we move through the summer, we, we expect to bring that up to to uh, 200 ounces a day. By the end of uh, September, and we expect to increase our milling capability to uh, around 300 uh, uh, tons per day. Now, will you be uh, you know, bringing on additional or adding additional mills in that strategic direction? Or yeah, we ex- we more? expect uh, by the end of the year we'll have three active operating mills, and uh, that are our. Uh, Capabilities uh, in, in our projections show that we'll be able to uh, process upwards of 400 uh, tons uh, per, of ore per day, and uh, with a head grade of an average of uh, one ounce per ton, that puts us in a in a very solid position. Yeah, that would grow your reserves that are proven quite significantly, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. The uh, I, I can I go back to the production piece. I mean, sure. and, and and just, uh, you know, I just want to really understand how difficult this is or try to understand how hard it is. Go, going to production is not easy, is it? No, it's not. You have to uh, you have to make sure that uh, you have the right system. You have to make sure that, uh, uh, that the system you have handles the uh, – can handle the ore. Uh, you have to be able to uh, have a system that crushes the ore. And uh, then it's a it's a it's a c- continually modifying and changing uh, everything as uh, um, as your every time you 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 uh, get ore from another mine uh, it changes the parameters of the mill so you have to make sure that as as you uh, change the ore and and change the the uh, uh, head grade and and anything related to the ore that you're that uh, your mill can handle the changes. Otherwise, your mill is down while you try to uh, to accommodate it, or or if a, a mill has a different uh, chemical uh, uh, composition, uh, then you have to change the the mill to accommodate the changes in the ore itself. Now, it's an on, if, ongoing. Your... It's an ongoing thing every single day. I can, I can only imagine. I mean, the you know, to to somebody that doesn't that doesn't understand the mining industry to us to to that degree. I mean, how would you explain to them what the difference is between proven reserves versus, say, probable reserves? All right. Well, pro- proven reserves are, are uh, reserves that you have found, you have drilled, uh, you have uh, cut your drilling uh, uh, down to a uh, uh, hundred a hundred foot. Uh, centers and that you have uh, gone ahead and, and uh, uh, determined uh, uh, gold is contiguous th- uh, throughout an area and that, that if you're going to mine it, you know you're not going to be mining gold one day and find the gold has disappeared. And uh, 
uh, so that you know that you have enough gold there to go under production, develop your mine, and uh, uh, make it economically viable. The uh, the uh, all the analysis have been completed uh, to find the amount of gold that's that's available uh, to be mined, and uh, then you've set your parameters for the mining, and you're ready to go. Probable is. Uh, you have uh, found some outcrops on your on your property. You maybe done a little bit of drilling, or you've dr done some trenching and found uh, some gold samples. You sent the samples to the lab so that you know somewhere on the property there's some gold, but you don't know what the grades are. You don't know how much it is. You don't know whether it's continuous or it may be just a pod somewhere, and. Uh, you have no information to be able to develop a, a mining program uh, because you don't know whether uh, there's enough gold there to justify the cost of the mining program. Now, the what are, what are your short-term to long-term goals, say the one-year to the five-year standpoint? Well, the, the short-term is to, to convert as, as much of our uh, probable reserves uh, to proven reserves and uh, uh, bring uh, on production uh, two to three uh, 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 mills. Our, our uh, long-term range will be to, to develop more and more uh, uh, reserves and ultimately bring our, our, our production up, up out of the mills up to around uh, 700 to 1,000 um, tons per day with, again, the head grade of uh, one ounce per ton. <laughs> That's pretty substantial. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's not as hard as, hard as you think because, for instance, uh, uh, we're looking at a project right now that uh, that uh, our, our initial testing shows that uh, uh, it has two ounces per ton. So, so uh, all it takes is is, is finding. Uh, 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 new properties, or or developing properties, or or finding properties that have uh, uh, pods of gold that are richer than others, so that uh, uh, you have times when you're when you're producing uh, an ounce of ton per or an ounce of gold per ton, and sometimes when you're producing two ounces of of gold per ton. So you you look at it as over over the time you don't want to go below an ounce per ton. And if you have better than that, that's great. And if you don't, but at the same time, you develop your reserves so that uh, you always have that to work with over a short-term basis and then as a long-term basis and as you increase your milling co uh, operation. Now, I would assume that you know increasing the milling operations would be a substantial catalyst or milestone event you know, for the company. Uh, it is, and, and what we found the easiest way to do it right now is through acquisitions and and uh, then upgrading and uh, modernizing uh, some older mills. Uh, to establish a new mill these days with the environmental considerations and the social considerations related to groundwater and and uh, streams and people uh, and the cost is, is very high compared to what it used to be. And we found that the the best way to do it is is uh, go into mills that already have an established license and uh, upgrade those mills. Sure. Now, what's your current share structure? Current share current share structure on Andes is we have a, a billion shares outstanding. Of that is uh, um, all but uh, one hundred and seventeen million are are restricted shares. And they represent the control block, and the parent company of uh, of Andes is, uh, is New World Gold, and it controls all the restricted stock because it's control block. It's not shares that will be trading. Uh, they can't trade. They're restricted uh, as long as there's a com control block. Other than that, no. uh, we have uh, we've had uh, uh, I, I would say. On, on the 170 million shares, we probably have close to 3,800 to 4,000 shareholders. Oh wow! Now, what 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 are your potential and actual revenue streams? Well, uh, here's here's a simple way to do it. For every every hundred ounces of gold a day that we uh, uh, 
uh, we produce. Uh, that means uh, that if we're at 100 ounces per day right now, uh, we'll generate $4 million in revenue per month. Uh, our profit on that is $1.2 million a month. Uh, it's pretty easy to do the math. If we're at 200 uh, uh, ounces of uh, gold per day, that means we're doing $8 million a month in uh, in uh, revenue, and we have a profit of 2.4 million a month. <laughs> 2.4 million in, in once you're at the 200 uh, in in you know profit. In profit, bottom line, bottom line stuff. Oh wow! So I mean, so as you at the end of April and and these steps that you're getting ready to take, um, your acquisition and growth uh, area, I'm sure, is just going to be explode. It is, and, and at the same time, we, we've, uh, you know, we're a pink sheet uh, based company. So, uh, uh, but we're, we hope to step up to a, a larger exchange, and to do that, uh, uh, we will have to get audited, and we're negotiating with uh, uh, several auditing firms right now to get involved and in, uh, with the company as auditors. But, I mean, just listen to these numbers and the, and the things that you're talking about. Um, I mean. Would you consider your, your, yourself extremely undervalued? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I'm just looking at the, at the at the different aspects of the company and the potential on the on the in, by April. Um, wow, uh, absolutely amazing. You, you yeah, we have, we, you we are we are very undervalued, and but mostly it's because we haven't taken the time to over the last year to tell anybody about what we're doing. Uh, I mean, if the shareholders had a complaint, they complained we haven't put enough information out to them and we've gone uh, uh, five six months without a press release while well, we we developed uh, the systems while well, we we got the mill go, mill going and and brought the uh, production on stream they uh, uh, they were right and that's why we we said in a press release we would try to be more open and, and get more information out to the shareholders so that they understand the value of the their company is is going up at a at a tremendous rate and and will continue to grow. Uh, we're looking forward to the next year and uh, and the growth that we put in place. Now, now what does the balance sheet look like? Balance sheet's a very strong balance sheet, and uh, if you look at it, uh, when we put it out the other day, is uh, uh, we have assets right now without considering the actual value of the the reserves themselves but just on the balance sheet we have 2.9 uh, million worth of assets liabilities are 900,000 so uh we're on a 3 to 1 on debt to uh asset to debt ratio uh you when you consider what the value of the uh, uh the reserves are just the proven reserves are 300 uh, ounces of uh of uh, gold, uh, and that has a value of uh, um, just uh, somewhere around uh, $600 million. So uh, we have a large asset base. The company itself, uh, just on uh, the normal uh, stuff related to uh, balance sheet, is 3 to 1 on assets to uh, uh, liabilities. We have no no debt in the company. Uh, most of the uh, Liabilities are due to related parties, and uh, uh, that's related to the parent company. Uh, and uh, so it's a strong balance sheet. Uh, our, our revenue for uh, last year was 4.4 million, and uh, with a, a profit of 521 thousand dollars. And uh, that's just our first year in production, and uh, uh, that was when we were averaging probably. Uh, 10 to 15 ounces of gold per day. Oh, excellent. The uh pretty uh pretty outstanding and I appreciate the way you said uh their company. That I mean, you 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 know, <laughs> as a as somebody representing the company in, in what you're saying, uh it's very impressive, absolutely impressive. Now, do you have a website? We do. The website is uh www.andysgoldmine.com. Uh, and uh, we've tried to upgrade it. Uh, one thing we can say that we're very proud of is the uh, government of Ecuador, where our, our operation is, uh, sent a TV camera uh, up to uh, one of our mines, and uh, 
they send it up there because we've environmentally done stuff that at the start that most people most companies haven't done and and uh, uh basically what what they they did a video on the company played it throughout the country and the the video that they did uh, which showed us uh collecting water even out of the mine shaft cleaning it uh we added fish to it put it back into the streams uh, when it went back into the stream, it was almost potable. And uh, what uh, the government said in the video is we're one of the few mining companies in Ecuador that's working to provide safe, responsible mining conditions while not polluting the water table and uh, local streams. And we're pretty pretty uh, proud to that we're socially and, and environmentally responsible. No, that's that's excellent, and it's it's always nice when a country supports you to that fashion. Now, would yeah. you consider the website the best resource for potential investors to learn more about your company? Yes, very much so. In that we're we're making an effort to update it on a on a biweekly basis, and uh, anybody that uh, wants to can sign up on the website and get press releases directly and that type of stuff. But it has the most accurate and up-to-date information on the company right now. Now, what do you think makes Andy's Gold Corp a good investment for potential investors? I mean, more importantly, if you had a five-minute elevator speech that would represent the excitement of the future of your company, what would it be? What I would say to people is is uh, the the key part in in, uh, uh, in the mining company is is production and cash flow. Uh, and and do they have a record to show that they can take uh, exploration properties and turn them into production and get into production? There's very very few companies, uh, other than the big guys, that uh, but certainly on the OTC that are able to get into production, and that's what makes us uh, puts us ahead above anybody else is we can take an exploration project, a project that's been developed to a certain extent, uh, bring it on production and uh, increase our cash flow. The having having mills uh is is truly the most important thing uh that we have going for us uh other than our reserves is that we will always have cash flow even if we aren't mining our own reserves we're mining we're producing other people's reserves and always generating cash which is what what the company needs to grow. Yep. We've covered a lot of information. Is there anything else you would like to address that I didn't cover? No, I think we've done a pretty good, uh, pretty good job here tonight. Well, I, I appreciate, it. and Mr. Talbot, we would like to thank you for taking the time to speak to our audience, and also would like to extend to you an open invitation to join us on the radio show in the future. All right, I appreciate it, and I enjoyed the opportunity, and thank you for that. All right, thank you, sir. Thank Have a good you. evening. Good night. Good night. That was Mr. Robert Talbot, the chairman and CEO of Andy's Gold Corp, stock ticker AGCZ. Man, the uh, did you guys hear those numbers? Heard those numbers. Wow. Did Did you hear the fact that <laughs> it, you know most companies won't give me those numbers? No. I mean, I, I, I you know I, I I have them jotted down. Did anybody do any calculations on that? I I jotted them down. I can't I can't provide that. Are you kidding? The uh, well, you got. We, I think we have a little bit of work to do on that because that that I'm I'm looking at that and then, you know, I don't want to get into you know what direction the stock's going or anything like that. Um, um, however, I want to look at the stock price on that and, and realize what's a, uh, uh, you know, did here's the part that kind of blew me away a little bit. And you guys, I mean, I mean, you could tell he's all about operations, all about revenue, all about the company performing to reflect the peeps. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean that was the bottom line there. That was that was pretty clear on that. Well, well one um, of the things one of the things I really liked that he said is that they're going after mills that already have the permits and the licensing, and then just you know revamping them. Um, so it's not like they're starting up a fresh mill, and, and the they're very environmentally friendly. You know, uh, I was pretty impressed by uh, when he said that you know the that the water was so clean and they had. Those tests done. Oh, I say what blew me away was did you notice the numbers doubled every time? Yep. I mean, in April, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, it's hard when you're doing the interview. 
They're at fifty. They're, they're at fifty ounces a day. Right. But by, by the end of April, they'll, they'll be at a hundred ounces per day. Correct. And we're already in April, so it's only one month. You know, within uh, thirty days. Yeah. And and then I think he said it was either three hundred or four hundred a few months down the road from that. Yeah. Okay. By the end of by the end of September, I believe he said by November. Two hundred. So two hundred. You're seeing a 300% growth in production over the next few months. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to have to get the calculators on that. I mean, that. hey, you know, what a night. I mean, seriously, what what a night. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, this is, uh, you know, we've interviewed a lot of mining companies, but that's the first production one that we've ever interviewed. I know most of them, all the other ones we've ever interviewed were exploration, meaning they had probable reserves, they had this, they had this property, uh, you know, all from, you know, we can, in you know, you, got, you guys remember all the interviews. I think we had, we had mining companies in the Yukon, Nevada, every South American country you can imagine. And, but in all exploration and yep. this guy's already at production with his company. And the fact that, you know, that, that two to three year process that normally you have to wait for the, why are these guys in the OTC? That's, I mean, that, it's trading, it's trading under seven cents. I mean, does that make sense though? Well, like you said, they've been very quiet, um, so that has a lot to do with it. We all know that. Um, but getting the word out now should should start helping. I mean, these numbers are just uh, phenomenal. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, normally with yeah, exactly. I mean, normally what you would have is is big institution just coming in like gangbusters right now. I mean, have they? I mean, I don't know the full background of the company, and, and I'll definitely research this, um, but. You know, to to be putting out that many ounces and the consistent growth, and then the acquisition thing. I mean, you're talking, you know, I mean, what a strategy to tell you the truth. Well, he's also working with partners for doing auditing, and you know, do auditing the financials. They're looking for people to help with that, and and uh, hopefully that you know, he said he was looking to try to uplist. So um, that'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what transpires with that over the next few months as well yeah no absolutely uh, yeah. ex- excellent thing the number the number that stuck out to me on, on the whole interview was when he was talking about <clears throat> uh, last year's uh, profit of 500 a little over five hundred thousand dollars and he said something I think he said it was 10 to 15 ounces a day yeah he did that got them there right so just in the end of April, you are going to have what seven, eight times that amount coming out a month. A day absolutely, day. absolutely. Well, the, uh, the what was the other piece? Oh, the one point. Yeah, on a hundred ounces. Hundred ounces uh, per day. Four million per month. Yep, one point two million profit. One point two million profit. Mm-hmm. Two hundred a day was two point four million profit. But that's a month. It's a month. It's a month. It's an easy month. <laughs> yeah, there's a um, there's some very intriguing stuff that's going to happen to this company. There's no and, doubt about that. And he did touch on on the fact that he was talking. It's only uh, viable for them to 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 do this when they're averaging one ounce per ton on the production side. Right. And didn't he say something about they they're testing an area right now that has two ounces per ton? Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, he goes. I guess they use that as a baseline, and anything mm-hmm. above that is great, is what yep. he said. Yeah. You know, which you know. That, so I guess they they plan on the minimum is what it it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I wish I could talk from experience on this one, but my knowledge of uh, gold mining is limited to Discovery Channel and the, the show Gold Rush. So. Oh, and we all know. Believe it or not. That's normal. But, but it breaks it down though. I love how that show it shows, you know, the the you know, struggles that these miners go through with permitting and, you know, machinery breaking down and the process and, and, and all that stuff. And it's I mean it's it's expensive and, and you know, these guys went through their whole life savings on that show and the the guy had to go borrow money from his sister to stay in business. It's not easy to, to you know, maintain and for and you know, most of these companies that we hear about we hear from uh, these junior miners on the OTC. They're always talking about, oh, well, you know, the 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 they're proven uh, or you know whatever 
properties have produced in the past around them or, uh, you know, these guys have been quiet and they've been waiting to make any announcements and they're in the production stage. It's just, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. No, like, like I said, I wish I could talk a little bit more knowledgeably about it, but, uh, I am limited to that and that only. Yeah. That's, that's the reason why I asked about the, the proven, uh, proven reserves versus probable. Right, right. Right. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that. And, you know, that's where the difference between, you know, expiration to production to, you know, until to milling. I mean, you know, when I was doing my, my due diligence on that, you know, they were working on a 1600 meter uh, mining tunnel that's expected to reveal huge potential and new proven reserves, you know, and, you know, I know he didn't want to, you can tell he, this guy was straight and narrow where I'm not going to give you any speculation. Nope. Did you notice that? Yeah. Well, he even said that he said, that's why they don't release many press releases. Right. You know, so, just whatever so, adds value. Yeah. You got to so, respect that. I mean, Oh yeah. yeah. Sure, your you, your your stock symbol might be not be the most exciting thing every single day, okay? But you know you're going places. That's just nice, you know. And, and it's not just fluff thrown out at you. Yeah. you, you got to respect that. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Talbot was uh, he was pretty clear on that, and you know, and, you know, he went into the you know ramping up the milling capacity and preparing mm-hmm. for massive growth. I mean, that's you know the i'm sure the i'm sure on one side and this is where you know how i always ask that phase stage and all that that question um you know depending on which mine you're in and which you know it would be a different answer to that question so it was probably worded wrong meaning like if you're in production and you're milling on one mine uh and then you know your other division of exploration if you will you know for future reserves and then your other division that is looking to acquire and uh you know other mines that need to be milled. I mean, there's a lot. That's a lot of different moving pieces at different stages of that. Um, amazing stuff. I mean, the pr- the production increases is what just baffles me. I mean, that's 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 huge numbers. Oh yeah, yeah because, they, so, good. So well. yeah, because as they grow in those, it, the, as the production growth, you know, it's it's a hundred percent by the end of this month, and then um, another two hundred percent from there because, you know, they're at fifty ounces a day now and by the end of april it'll be 100 and then they're saying 200 by uh yeah by the end of september close to november he said um so but with that comes the revenue increases because you know that and then and then they're going to be up to 2.4 million dollars in profit by then is that is that what it was well i think it yeah i think that's because i think what he said is they're they're getting ready to go to their second mill right Mm -hmm. Potentially a third over the year, right? Right. Okay. Well, as each one of them, you know, per per ton, you're expected to do one ounce. So, and it could be more than that based off of whatever's happening. And you know, and then you had that one avenue where you know the big the big tu- the tunnel that they're 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 almost done with. You know, I think the what I read, I thought it was somewhere around 400 ounces in proven reserves uh, of, of potential. That's a, I, but I could be wrong on that. I'll have to verify that. So you know, don't don't quote me on that. But I mean, the point being is it, it's expound, it's exponential growth on every single one of these. And what I mean, you know, he was, he was pretty clear on the fact that you know they're they're in that in between stage where long long past expiration stage in the production phase milling, and now we're milling for other people. You know, and and he mentioned you know we're with the big boys. Yeah. You know, and you know, eventually, you know, clearly. Uh, at this rate, they'll be one of the big boys. Well, that was what he was saying. Is you know they have another stream of revenue because they they mill for other people, right? So obviously you're making some cash there. Um, another big thing that I that I heard was no debt. Gotta love that. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh yeah. You gotta love that. I mean, there's just no way around it. Also, just to expand on your uh, increase over the year, they're talking. He said. By the end of the year, they want to have three active mills processing 400 tons a day. Oh, wow. 400 tons a day, which would be, if you got the ounce it, per ton, you get yeah. about four, 400 ounces per day times like, uh, what, 1,600? What is the trade net? It's 1672 current price. Okay, so times that out, divide out what the costs are, and you got your number. Yeah, but by the end of the year, you could see gold rise back close to two thousand. So you never know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the big deal too with the mill thing. I mean, that's when you control your own destiny, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can predict your own pricing the whole nine yards. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Yep. Very good. 
Very, very good. If you missed any portion of tonight's interview, you'll be able to catch it on Investors Hub under videos and then market commentary. That was a fabulous night, guys. Long, but very well done. Action packed. It was the, tonight's uh, definitely uh, going to go down in the record books for STT Radio with that, you know. Well, we couldn't ask for more. The timing was perfect. He, you know, got on when we needed him to and got it going for the second show. I was a little nervous of how we were going to get pull this off tonight, but I think we did. Well, I'm I'm actually honored, guys. I, I will tell you that, and I don't I don't normally normally get to that is you know one you know you know mr talbot didn't have to talk to us you guys know that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know we're we're you know we're we're up and coming and you know i think we have a really good show and i think we have a you know pretty pretty intense followers and and those type of things uh and quite frankly maybe this you know wasn't the uh the actual avenue for that. And I'm sure, cause I, I feel that a lot of questions today is, you know, why are they coming to see you? And, <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, the truth be told is, you know, we got, we found them and, uh, uh, pretty exciting. Good stuff. Very good. Very good night. All right. Don't forget to catch the morning show. That's right. The STT morning show kicks off at 9 a.m. Eastern standard time. Starring Stock Sumo, Hoss, and Sifikia. Great morning show. As they read out what's hot in the news, once the bell rings, they get up the L2s and see what's moving around the OTC market. Great show they have. It's exciting. Um, I'm hoping to get up early enough and join them tomorrow. We'll see how that works out. I know Sumo doesn't like when I step on his toes. But since they took my music away, I may be here to play. We shall see. Mr. Cop, Mr. Sifikia, Mr. Stock Sumo, you all have a good night. And we'll see you again tomorrow for the night show at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You are listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio. From all of us here at Stock Traders Talk Radio, to all of you out there in Stock Traders Talk Radio land, We're wishing you the best on all your trades, and may your portfolio always be green. This is Stock Traders Talk Radio, and we are out. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio. All views and topics talked about on Stock Traders Talk Radio is solely for entertainment purposes. We are not professional financial advisors and always recommend you seek the advice of a professional financial advisor. Never invest in any stock featured on our show unless you can afford to lose your entire investment. The information contained on our show is based on sources which we believe to be reliable but is not guaranteed by us as being accurate and might not be a complete statement or summary of the available data. Stock Traders Talk Radio advises that the investments in companies profiled are commonly considered to be high risk and use of the information provided is at the investor's sole risk. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio.